First off, this isn't a scripted video like my normal show reviews are, and this isn't even a real show review. I've been talking a lot in the single release videos about AEW having problems, and I've met a lot of agree uh, agreements and disagreements with people on this. And the all the same thing that these AEW defenders inevitably say is what about is and I'm not defending WWE because I wrecked Raw last week. So this is a Tony Khan problem. This is a problem with a petulant child boy king running a billion dollar freaking you know, guys a billionaire is running this company and it is, it's literally, and I know all the talking heads say it, but it is the absolute truth. This man is a grown ass man playing with fucking action figures. And these matches are booked as such. The lack of story. I had more story when I played with action figures as a kid. And that's the problem with Tony Khan in his booking and the way he allows these matches in this television product, which they're trying to get a better deal. This is his problem, is there's no fucking structure to anything. And what they do manage to do right, it inevitably gets botched in the end, like the MJF storyline, like Swerve's title run, which is still going, but I, I mean, I can't help but think they're gonna, they're gonna screw him out of this and totally ruin his title run in some way. And when they bring in new superstars, there's two ways you come in. And you come in and you get the big pop and you get the big main event first and you break right into that scene or you come in and it's quiet and you start getting stooged out right away. And the first main problem I want to talk about and she just debuted last night is Camille. So you're Tony Khan and you sign one of the absolute literal and figurative hottest female free agents out there. One title's all over the place. Looks like she's built of satin wrap steel. Uh, can move in the ring. Looks good. You know, I mean, she comes across like a million bucks. And this just absolute Themyscirian beauty who can wrestle. This is somebody who you should bring in and build around. She's been signed for months, right? So Britt and DE Dummy or CEO are going back and forth. And Camille comes in, puts the boots to her, torture racks her, hits her, hits her with this deal. It's almost like a blue thunder bomb. And now she's saddled with Mercedes Moan. Now she's saddled with one of the most unpopular, freaking over the top gimmicks. And who's going to suffer for this? It's not Tony Khan. It's not Mercedes. It's not Britt Baker. Because they're going to use Britt Baker. Britt's going to squash Camille. Because Britt's going to get revenge now. So you're going to use Britt to squash Camille. You're going to bury her, her first program in the company. I'm not going to yell. I'm just going to say that is absolutely an AEW thing to do. Speaking of AEW things to do, let's talk about Blood and Guts next. So we'll go to Wojak Tony Khan. And Wojak Tony Khan allows his EVPs to book matches that make a certain wrestling personality. <laughs> AEW Blood and Guts. Team AEW versus Team NW, I mean Team Elite. And this match had absolutely zero stakes. The build to it was pretty rudimentary. And <laughs> I, I saw nothing positive to be derived from this match. Other than the CZW uh, Combat Zone Wrestling fans out there and the ECW faithful getting something that they want, which is absolute hepatitis wrestling. Uh, this is garbage. This was garbage. This match didn't need to happen. It shortens careers. You've got a lot of promising young talent in this ring, and then you have... Um, everybody else outside of Swerve Strickland. It's just a sad state of affairs when Swerve's title reign has been mishandled so poorly that he had to get in a fucking Mexican standoff with staple guns with the Young Bucks and have it look so bad, so stupid, that a cartoon could have scripted this scene more effectively than we got what played out in the ring. 
But again, this is the type of shit that you're going to derive when you allow Matt and Nick Jackson to call the shots backstage and, you know, push Jack Perry and Okada as if these guys are in somehow, some way, stars or have any kind of star power outside of, you know, Jack Perry's dad, the late Luke Perry. And Matt and Nick are bad. Okada look god awful, broken down, and just fucking horrible in this match. Everything he did was slow and plodding. He moved with all the grace of a mud fence. And speaking of things that don't belong, let's talk about Hangman Adam Page. Now, when you think about cowboys and type characters throughout, you know, the history, outlaws of professional wrestling, you know, you've got what, uh, you know, Bob, Cowboy Bob Orton, Stan Hansen, you know, um, you know, maybe even uh, Hillbilly Jim, um, you know, James Storm. Um, there's there's a lot more that I'm probably missing, um, but long, far, far down at the very bottom of that list, I'd take Uncle Elmer before Hangman Adam Page. You talk about somebody who walked in out of like, I don't know, an urban setting and was like, I'm going to be a cowboy. This just strikes, I know he's from Virginia. It just, it doesn't, there's nothing that sells you on the gimmick um he's supposed to be a tough guy i just don't buy it i don't he doesn't nothing sells it you know there's no there's nothing behind the gimmick there's no weight to it uh the only thing i can say about him is next to matt and nick jackson anybody looks tough let's be honest here those guys don't project uh, masculinity or physicality or toughness of any kind in any way whatsoever, shape or form. The whole rivalry between Swerve and Adam Page has been nothing but a joke of, you know, it's a build up with no delivery kind of situation. Yeah, I just, Swerve, it, it, he seems so above Adam Page in the respect that, like, why is he even giving this guy, you know, the time? I understand, I understand the attempt at a why, but the story falls flat because why am I buying into this between Page and Swerve when Swerve is actually a better heel than Page, but Swerve is a babyface right now? And yeah, this is just, it's an Adam Page problem. He's not good. So we'll take a look at a couple spots in the match which I found particularly contrived. Didn't need to happen. These are pay-per-view. You know, we only need one of these in a match type spots. But we got one of the Bucks and one of the Acclaimed on the side of the cage climbing up. And uh, I think it's Bowens. He takes a couple, you know, uh, gets his noggin rung off the side of the structure a few times. And then gets ready and waits and waits. And then takes the big back bump off the cage. And this spot right here is just indicative of how the Young Bucks treat it. He's telling Bowens, hey, look, I need you to take this spot. Land through four tables, which break unpredictably even when gimmicked. These things can fall any which way once a 230-pound man's body hits them from about a you know six to eight foot fall. So this is asking a lot. Knowing that they're going over, it's like, hey, look, but I still want to get my shit in, basically, is what this amounts to. And coming from one of your EVPs, he should have been the one taking the fucking table spot. You know, I'm, I'm sorry, but the people aren't paying to see Bowens go through the table. They're paying to see you go through the table because you're the fucking heel. You know, you should know better than that. Just a garbage spot. And again, it's on a free show. And I think, I think you know where we're going next. We're going to Darby Allen and his Spider-Man spot to the middle of the cage over top of Jack Perry, the coffin drop. And this is particularly 
troubling to me because number one, Darby Allen obviously has no regard for his own well-being, which why do I care, right? He's putting, he's willingly putting himself in this position. So you're thinking, why are you being an asshole and ruining the fun for the rest of us? Because I know the long-term effects of what this is going to do to this man. And as somebody who is a brother in the squared circle, I don't want to see anybody put their body through that for nothing. And this is for nothing. This angle's never going to pay off. For, who's, this, who's this angle going to benefit? Hmm? This, this, benefit, this angle going to benefit Darby Allen? This is going to benefit Mark Briscoe? No? Not at all? Is it going to benefit the acclaimed? Is it going to benefit Swerve? Who? Who's coming out on top in this? Tell me. Who's coming out on top in this angle? There's nobody that wins in this angle. This angle's dead. Nobody gives a shit about the elite. All right? They're, they're not, like I said, it's not like the NWO. That's what they want to do. And it's not going to work because you don't have the horses. You've got two guys who weigh total uh, about half of me and my tag partner's total combined weight. I, I mean, I don't know. It's just, it's just fucking sad. I, I mean, what were we like? Let's see. Um, five, we were 500 and some pounds combined. I mean, like 5'10", maybe. And, you know, these, these guys are small. You know, they're small. They're not threatening. You don't have... What you're trying, you don't have the people to do the angle. You know, you, you'd have to go out and sign actual guys that look like badasses, like Hall and Nash did, and then you have to put the faith in to them in Tony Khan's creative mind and saying that this is what we're gonna do, and it, it won't work. That's why this angle was dead on arrival from the moment it took off. Now this spot right here actually makes sense. You got a good caning spot, right? And Mark works pretty safe with this cane, as you can tell. Jack's taking a shot with it, but the cane's, it's loosened up, and he's trying to swing it and hit the cage on the other side more so than Jack's exposed ribs. This showed the heel in peril. You knew at this point, you know, Team AEW's going over. So they've got, you know, the they, they heel, the swarmy heel that everybody hates, and I'm going to give this match props for this one. Because this is a controlled, this is a good example of a controlled chaos spot, right? Where you've got the guy, you could just bludgeon him. He's already pretty beaten up. So you make, just make it look good and really sell it. And that brings us to the chair shot heard around the world that got Corey Graves chased his uh, tweet deleted, not chased off Twitter, but he deleted his tweet after he made a comment about it an hour after Blood and Guts. And I was out of town this weekend, so I didn't get a chance to comment on this. But I don't care how they want to spin it, how they want to sell it to you. This chair shot to the head, gimmicked chair or not, was fucking brutal. And I've been hit with chairs, and I don't care what excuses you hear from these AEW defenders that say, well, they do this on Raw or they do this on WWE. Look, I don't condone it there either because that shit shortens careers and really, really can obviously fuck up somebody's entire life. So, no, I, let's let's look at it like this now. You watch this chair shot in real time and it looks bad. It looks like, God, he just murdered Jack Perry because his hands are restrained. He took that and you'll hear the defenders say, oh, but it's, it's a gimmick chair. Okay, so let's watch it in slow motion and see how bad it looks then. Haters, haters will say it's fake, right? So here comes the chair shot, and we look. Here comes Briscoe. Wham! That was flush on the flat part of the chair. Okay, now kudos. He hit him with the flat part of the chair. Still unprotected right to the front of the head. That is, that's not good for the human brain, okay? Get you can't do shit like that with the chair. The rib shot, stuff like that, the body work, that's okay because you could do that safely. That chair shot, if he would have come across and hit the cage more so and just made it look like he did, that would have been a hell of a lot better. But no, they had to go for it. And, and Jack Perry Price said, hit me with it because this is living with the light bulbs and the car windshield and all that shit. So yeah, this is, 
not a good not a good decision by Jack Perry uh, or Mark Briscoe should be held culpable for this because he was one even if he said do it you know Mark should have been like I, I don't think we should do that so the last piece of business outside of the fact that they couldn't get the key to unlock the handcuffs but Darby Allen was gonna light Jack Perry on fire and I know this wasn't real gasoline or if it was they're fucking really stupid but I it was probably water so Darby Allen used a flamethrower before, you know, and this whole thing, like, where, where, where can we go from here, boys? It used to be, hey, don't use a pile driver because the main event's going to use a pile driver or a gorilla press slam. Now it's like, hey, are you going to light um, the heel on fire in your match while he's handcuffed to the cage? Because I kind of wanted to do that. And the other guy's like, well, no, I was going to drive a truck through the building and throw a fucking Molotov cocktail into it and watch the entire fucking thing blow up with the entire arena and everybody inside it. And I figured Uncle Dave might give me five stars that way. Again, this problem runs deeper than bad booking. This is a problem of culture, and the culture at AEW is try to get Dave Meltzer to give your match as many stars as possible and try to get the guy playing with the action figures, the great and powerful Oz, as it were, behind the curtain to notice you in the toy box so he doesn't take you out in the backyard like Buzz and strap an M80 to you and try to shoot you to the moon. This is ridiculous. I, I just, I don't want to see my 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 fellow brethren, and, and, you know, and, and get hurt in the ring doing stupid shit for a niche audience that will chant, this is awesome, if Will Ospreay steps foot in the fucking ring. And that's the problem with these AEW fans. And they don't understand that this is not an attack on you personally. This is an attack on shit wrestling that is going to be negative to the business in the long run. The same way the blood and, and guts, pardon the expression, of ECW would have been harmful if that was the mainstream as opposed to the niche audience because ECW had a lot more to offer than just hardcore wrestling and AEW does have more to offer than that and I guess if I could leave them with one piece of advice it's you've got to do better thank you everybody be sure to subscribe do all the YouTube things support us on Patreon or don't I love you either way I'm ETEP. Remember, it's always better to burn out than fade away or be Tony Khan. Hey.